and welcome to Let's Go Live. Morning. <laughs> I'm Maddie. I'm Greg, and all together now, we, we are live. live. Very it's, excited about this week. Yeah, it's <laughs> a new week, so we have a new theme. Yep. Uh, grab your knives and forks because... It's going to be a feast of fun and facts. Yeah, a banquet of appetising activities. A right good spread of tasty quizzes uh, and awkward selfies, of course. Because this week is... Food week! week. Yes, my favourite thing, get all the food in my face. Someone is very excited. Uh, we love a food activity here on Let's Go Live. We've already done a few. Uh, maybe you can think of some. How about the solar oven s'mores we did during Project Earth Week? That was so good. They were tasty. Um, uh, we grew our own tomatoes and potatoes in Garden Week. Yeah, we used red cabbage to make trolls brain juice in Magic Week. How about that epic biscuit fossil model we did in Dino Week? Oh yeah, that was good. That took us a while to eat, actually. Oh. Oh, what else? Oh, it's theme park week. We made theme park snacks and we made pirate bananas Arr. and pirate pizza maps. <laughs> pirate so pizza treasure fun. map. That was so much fun. Yeah. However, this time round, we are dedicating three shows all to food science. Um, oh, yeah. It's the science behind our favourite foods. Yeah, in fact, why don't you lot tell us some of your favourite foods in the live chat if you're watching live right now? Yeah, let us know. And if you're watching back later on, hello. Hi. Thanks for coming and watching back. Hello, hello, hello. So what about the rest of the week? Uh, well, on Wednesday, we are going to be slurping strawberry smoothies. Uh, and on Friday, we're going to be tucking into a cheeseburger. <laughs> but we're kicking off with one of our absolute favourites, chocolate cake. Chocolate cake. Um, we're doing an episode all about cake. Uh, we thought we could do with some advice mm -hmm. from someone who knows cake better than anybody else in the world, but also someone who knows the science and the engineering of cake. Yeah, so who better to ask than a good friend of ours, a finalist from the Great British Bake Off and an aerospace engineer, Andrew Smith. Yes, Andrew is an engineer, he's a baker, he's a presenter. Uh, in fact, he often combines all those things and does something he called baconeering, oh, which is yeah. engineering with cake and other sweet treats. Andrew is going to set a challenge for us today. So to find out what that challenge is, we are going to give him a call. He's going to join us live. So you can all say hi. Right, okay, let's go. Andrew. Let's get him in. <laughs> Andrew! Hello! Hi. Hi Greg, hi Maddie. Hello buddy. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm doing very well, thank you. I've just had a little bit of cake myself. Oh, nice. For breakfast, why not? Very nice. Um, for breakfast. You've got a little challenge for us, we believe. I do indeed. So Greg, Maddie, your challenge is to create a quick and easy chocolate cake, but not just that. I want you to really think about where all your ingredients come from and also find out what important job each of them do in your recipe. Okay, okay. all right. So what role do the ingredients play? Quick and easy play? chocolate cake, where exactly. and why? Yeah. All right, will you come back later on in the show and judge our final cake? Absolutely. <laughs> the pressure. Okay. The no, pressure no pressure, no pressure. We, we are baking for a Bake Off <laughs> finalist. Andrew, what, what do you look for in a chocolate cake? I look for a good crumb, that it's nice and chocolatey and um, you should be able to cut into it very easily. It shouldn't be rubbery at all. Oh, okay. Pressure. All okay. Right, Thank you so much. Okay, challenge set. We'll see you later. <laughs> see you later Bye. on. Bye. Bye, Andrew. Andrew. <laughs> oh. Okay. Okay. We are making chocolate cake and Andrew wants us to find out where each ingredient comes from. Uh, so let's start with chocolate. Hang on, who watching loves chocolate? If you love chocolate, find the thumbs up on this <laughs> video, right? Give us a thumbs up. I want to see the thumbs up button go crazy if you like chocolate. I'd be like, me. But has anyone told us what their favourite foods are? Oh, has anyone mm. told us what the favourite foods are? Um, Oh, Let's... someone said Oreo ice cream. Oh, okay. Uh, chili con carne, ice cream, cheeseburger, pizza. Ewan's favourite is cream eggs. Oh. Amelia says uh, macaroni cheese. Lots of you are saying pizza. Pizza is a very good choice. Um, who else have we got? Lila. Oh. Lila is saying chocolate cake. Same as us, Lila. Bonnie says enchiladas. Uh, ben is saying spaghetti bolognese. Patty says salmon and pea pasta. <laughs> Aiden says cheesy pasta. Oh. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. So, Delicious. just turn that down just a touch. We're a little bit loud today. I told you we're getting excited. Um, let's get into it. Chocolate. Yeah. So, how is chocolate made? Where does chocolate come from? Do you think it starts out as a plant or an animal? 
It's definitely a plant. It's plant, but have you ever seen a chocolate bar growing on a bush? Have you ever seen a Toblerone tree? Have you ever seen a Smarties sunflower? I think not. No, no. I wish, I wish those things existed. Um, but chocolate does start out as a type of plant, though. It actually starts as a kind of bean mm. that grows on a tree. Do you know what tree it might grow on? Uh, it's a cacao tree. It is. Yeah. Well done. And well done if you got that right as well. Uh, so this here, this is a cacao tree or a bunch of cacao trees. Um, they like to grow in warm places and also they like a wet climate as well. So in the wild, cacao trees tend to grow in rainforests. Oh, let's bring up the globe. Yeah, let's have a look at do. where this is. All right, so here we go. We've got the globe here. We find that te uh, rainforests tend to grow along uh, the equator, which is the invisible line that runs around our planet. But uh, one of the popular places to grow chocolate is actually in West Africa, with the Ivory Coast and Ghana being the two biggest producers of cacao. Here it is. Mm. Mm. Now, cacao trees grow um, these massive seed pods yeah. right um i've got a picture of them here look at them <laughs> it can take up to six months for a cacao pod to grow to its full size um right. we've actually got some cacao pods to show you they're not real uh, no <laughs> they're they're plastic but here we go um this is right the size of a cacao pod mm -hmm. this is once it's been grown like not that long mm -hmm. it's this this type is green mm -hmm. because it's quite young yeah so so we'd say this one isn't quite ripe yet no then as it ripens a bit more this one gets a bit more orangey so it's kind of like orange green yellowish yeah. yeah and then when it's fully ripe after those six months it turns red Wow, so a whole six months that's going to take growing on a tree to get to its final stage. Now, I'm gonna, can I give these back to you, actually? Oh, go on then. Take them over there. Well, I tried juggling them. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's a no. Oh. <laughs> okay, maybe we should have done that. Um, so once the cacao pod is ripe and ready, it will be chopped down from the tree with a big old knife. And then the cacao pod is opened up to reveal something inside. What do you think we're going to find inside that cacao pod? We're going to find beans. So these beans are actually the seeds for the cacao plant. Oh. If we were to plant one of these beans, then it might grow into another cacao tree. Oh. Because we learned all the way back in garden week that beans are seeds. So we'll put a description, we'll put a little uh, link in the description box below if you want to go back and find more about um, how seeds grow into plants. Let's have another look at the inside of that pod. Um, inside there can be around 50 beans uh, and that, those beans they are what we turn into chocolate mm. but that leads to our next question. How do you go from a bunch of gooey wet beans inside the seed pod to a delicious chocolate bar that we can eat as a treat. Hmm, well, to find that out, I think we might have to head to a chocolate making factory or yes. a chocolatiers. Um, I've, I've spent a bit of time in uh, factories uh, over have. the past five years or so. You have, yes. So, you know, safety first, you've got to think about your hygiene. So, Greg, I've actually got uh, a little hairnet for you. Great. Your, uh, your, your, your beard is nice and short, otherwise I'd have to give you uh, a beard snood as well. <sighs> but I'm not going to do that, you just put this on. I've got to make sure my hair's tucked in inside the factory. Very important. There Very we important. Go. Very important. Okay. All right. So um, it's the spare room factory. I think <laughs> I think you'll agree. <laughs> so we're going to look at how we make milk chocolate. <laughs> and to make milk chocolate, we need three main ingredients. Here they are. We need cacao beans. And we've already found out that they come from the cacao tree. We want milk or some kind of creamy alternative uh, that you can get from a plant like soy or coconut milk. And then lastly, we can see sugar. So those are our three main ingredients. Now, you might have noticed that the cacao beans on that picture look a little bit different from those gooey ones out of the pod. Mm, they were really pale and white, weren't they? That's because first you take your cacao beans and you dry them and you roast them like this in an oven until they go dark. Uh, and yeah. actually what's kind of cool is we've got some roasted cacao beans here in the spare room studio. Okay, so you can see them here. And like this sort of actually, why don't I zoom in for you so you can see a little bit more? There you go. Nice. Um, so they do. They've they've gone all hard. They're dried and roasted. And actually, if I was to crush one of these inside, we would find 
bits of this. We call these cacao nibs. It's basically bits of dried roasted bean. And I think that this is starting to look quite a bit like chocolate. Mm. But you can eat these, but they don't can quite you? taste like the chocolate we know and love. You can eat you them, wanna, you say. Yeah, do you want to try a cacao nib? Yep. Clean my hands. Got the hand, we've got some hand sanitizer here. Okay, you ready? Yeah. What do you think? Crunchy. Very <laughs> crunchy. Oh, I do get a bit of oh, I get a I get a bit of chocolate. Yeah. But they're really bitter. Yeah, they are. Oh, they're amazing. But you've mm -hmm. got to do a bit of something, something, something to them to make them delicious. Yeah, they are a bit bitter at the moment. So we need to add some other things to turn them into sort of that, that delicious, sweet milk chocolate that we're making today. Mm. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take those roasted cacao beans and we're going to put them into a machine. And this is where those beans are going to get grinded down by those heavy wheels. And slowly they will turn into a paste and it's at this point that we actually will call the cacao beans cocoa ah now sometimes yeah. this cocoa paste mm -hmm. uh, can be dried out it can be turned into chocolate powder and mm -hmm. um, it can be used as an ingredient in baking or um can i have the chocolate powder please you can have yeah or you can uh, use it to make hot chocolate as well yeah. right which mm. is kind of cool put these there for, for later thank you thank you thank there you. we are Okay, uh, so that's so that's if we wanted to make cocoa powder. But what if we wanted uh, to make chocolate like we're doing now? Mm. So actually, we're going to have to put that cocoa paste into another machine, and we're going to mix it with our final two ingredients. What were they? So they are sugar, yeah, and milk. Okay, so let's see the type of mixer you might find in a factory. Um, you might have a mixer at home like this that you might use to make something like a cake. This one in a factory is exactly the same, it's only a little bit bit bigger. And this is where the ingredients are mixed together until everything is really thick and smooth. Yes, now it's the sugar that makes it sweet. Yeah. It's the fats that make it creamy. Mm, mm. delicious. But to make a milk chocolate bar, you might add some other ingredients so that the chocolate lasts longer. Yep. And then you would heat it and you would cool it to very specific temperatures because that's what helps give chocolate its snap. Ah, yes. Yeah. The and then, satisfying snap. Yeah. And then finally, you would pour that sort of that, that mixture into a mould and you'd let it cool down till it turned into a solid. And that's when you would have your chocolate bar. It's amazing, isn't it, to stop and think about all the different ingredients that go into a mm. treat like a chocolate bar and where they've travelled and how far they've travelled. Yeah, actually, let's get the. It's amazing, isn't it? Because if we it. got our cocoa from yeah. um, the West Africa, from West Africa, right, yeah. from the Ivory Coast, yeah. it'd have to travel around what three thousand miles yeah, to, to get, get to, to a UK, factory in the UK, which is all the way up, up. here. Yeah. Mm. Gosh, and then that doesn't include uh, the sugars and the milk. So True. the sugar, well, let's go milk first. Milk might have come from a local farm. So okay, let's pop so that here. That might have come from the UK. It's great. Yeah. Um, but it's possible that the sugar mm -hmm. could have come, as we said earlier, the sugar could have come from sugar cane yeah. from somewhere hot and tropical like the Caribbean, which is almost five thousand miles away yeah so look how far all of these things have had to travel whoops just to get to us to the factory where they would then be turned into a chocolate bar wow that mm. does does make you appreciate your favorite I think foods so. i think it really does doesn't it well we don't have a full-on factory here in the spare room studio but no. we can recreate the process uh we are going to combine all those main ingredients together to make ourselves Chocolate cake. Yes, we are. But we need one more of the ingredients, which is in the fridge. So oh. let's take the hair nets off. <laughs> <laughs> and you tell everyone else what we've got sure. to do. Sure. We said before the show, we said, um, I'm sure we've forgotten something because there's so many props and ingredients in the show. Obviously, we've forgotten the thing and I know exactly what it is that's in the fridge. Okay, so we are not going to try to make a chocolate bar. We are going to try to make some chocolate spread to put on our cake. Now, as we said, we washed our hands really well before the show. We've got hand sanitizer here to use every time before we uh, before we make anything. Mads, take us through how to make chocolate spread. Right, okay, so like Greg just said. Can you said, put a new hairnet on, please? Oh, we're, gonna, we're sticking with our hairnets, aren't oh, we? Safety oh, first, hygiene me. first. Excuse me, I thought, I thought we'd left the factory. No. Nope. I thought we'd returned to the kitchen. Hang on, let me just put this away. Thank you very much, am I all tucked in? Am I, you do I pass the regulations? Tick on my Thank clipboard. You so much. <laughs> um, okay, so we're going to be making some chocolate spread today because we can put it on the cake for Andrew. Nice. Right, hands are washed. 
So we need our three ingredients. Um, to make chocolate spread, the first thing you might want to get is a type of a leak proof jar. Let's just uh, come out a little bit. So we're using this plastic one here. So I'm just gonna open that up. And then we're gonna need, uh, what's, what, what ingredients should we use first? How, get first, how about cacao? Yes. So this is cocoa powder, the sort that you might make hot chocolate with. And I'm going to put 50 grams of that inside our jar. So that comes from roasting, you know, drying yeah. and roasting those cocoa beans and yep. then uh, those cacao beans and then crushing it down and crushing it down. Absolutely. So pop in the cocoa powder. So it's kind of like dried cocoa paste really. Next up. Sugar, yeah, for the sweetness. So let's put some sugar in. Yeah, so I'm using 50 grams of icing sugar, and this is going to yeah add that sweetness because, as we know, cacao and cocoa by itself is quite bitter. We don't and want that bitterness. the last of this trio of main ingredients <laughs> is milk. Yeah, we're going to well, we're going to use dairy today. We're actually using double cream because it's going to get nice and thick. Uh, but you could use a plant-based alternative mm -hmm. if you wanted to. So I'm going to pour that in now. And actually it's the fats in the cream that are going to make our spread really lovely and smooth. Now if we remember back to the factory, the final stage is to mix things yes but we, we don't, don't have, have a, mixer. a mixer no mixer no problem ready i've got an idea okay what idea do you let's have? just put some music on let's have a dance and let's shake it up so we're making chocolate spread shaken not stirred yes exactly that <laughs> okay all right okay what if could you possibly go home, wrong you definitely want to have a leak proof jar and when you get shaken and dancing don't let go <laughs> Okay. Okay. All right. You so ready to dance at home? Put You're some ready music to on. The chocolate ready? Mix. When your arms are tired, <laughs> pass it over, and I'll go next. Okay. I don't know how long this takes. Grown up, shake it like a cocktail. There you go. Yes. How long do I have to shake it for? My go. I'll go one more. Oh. If you do try this at home. Yeah, do make sure that lid's on nice and tight first. And there's extra points for style of the dance. Okay, come on, let's not do it. Oh, wait, there you go. I think we're good. I'm looking at Andrew in the chat. Do you think it's mixed, Andrew? Oh, we got a thumbs up. Okay, okay, let's go, let's. Okay. Let's kill the music. Okay, right, I'm gonna open it up and we can see how it's done. Moment of truth. Okay, oh. It's not bad, it's not. Bad. Do you want a little bit more? I think we can go a little okay, bit more. I'll go crazy. Music. Oh, uh... <laughs> That's I'm out it. Of breath. I reckon you need to shake it for at least one whole song. Okay. I like to While you're shake doing it, that... shake it. I like to shake it, shake While it. While you're doing that, Ewan's favourite food is cream eggs. Lots of you are saying pizza. Lots of you are saying chocolate cake like Lila. Ben, spaghetti bolognese. Oh, I read those ones. Oh, did you? Yeah. Max says burgers. Kira says pizzas. Jessica says sweets. Henry, Rowan, Eloise, Madison, Violet, Hannah likes chocolate. <laughs> uh, that'll do. Uh, that'll do. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Moment of truth. <sighs> Can't breathe. Only for Andrew Smith. Here we go. <laughs> Oh, yes. here we go. Take okay, a look. Okay, ready for the shot? Take a look. Look at that. Oh, Perfect. yes. Perfect. Yes. That is amazing. Can I try some? Yeah, you can. So I have got your little tasting spoon here. Thank you very much. Right, in fact, let me do this so you can sort of get a sense of how lovely and thick oh, that is. Oh, look at that. Oh, delicious. There you go. Okay, hang on. All get of this. as well. Chin ready? chin. Yep. Dink it. All right. All right, that's, in that's incredible. <sighs> That's absolutely incredible. That is so good. You have to try this at home as a proper special treat. Mm, three ingredients and all you need to do is shake it up. Oh. Mm. Amazing. Mm. Very, so, very tasty. Back to Andrew's challenge, yes? Yes. We're in the process of finding out what goes into chocolate cake, where mm -hmm. it comes from and why we use it. That's the next bit. Um, can I take this off now? Yes. Right then. So do this not like chocolate? I'm oh, sure lots of them in their life. So many of them do. loving chocolate. Really? Yeah, they're all going bonkers for the chocolate. And so <laughs> many thumbs up for the chocolate. Keep those thumbs up coming. Thank you. Okay, we have got to make a chocolate cake. Yes. Uh, but we're going to make a quick and easy chocolate cake. Yep, that's the key. That's the, thing the key. Is, it normally takes about 20 minutes to bake a type of chocolate cake in the oven. Mm. Uh, but we don't, we don't have that amount of time. We, we also don't have an oven in the spare room. 
But there is a quicker way to make a chocolate cake in a microwave. You're right. So we already have the rest of the ingredients ready to go. All we need to do is mix them up in a mug. It's a mug cake. Pop that mug in a microwave and it will be ready in a minute and a half. But we want to find out what each ingredient does in our cake mix. So I think let's not make one cake. Let's make... Let's make four cakes. Four? Yeah. I know what you're doing here, Greg, but you just want more cake. Me? Yeah. Me? Never, never. No, what I want to do is a really interesting science experiment, right? That first cake, we'll put all the ingredients in, okay? The second cake, we'll take Hmm. one of the ingredients out. Okay. The third cake, we'll take a different ingredient out. Fourth cake, different ingredient out. And then that way, oh. when we make all the cakes, we can see what each of those ingredients is doing to our cake. Okay, yeah, that that's actually a really good idea. Thanks. A chocolate mug cake experiment. Yes. And you get to eat more cake at the end of it. Right. Right, okay, yeah, fair enough. Um, why don't we start, though, with our complete chocolate cake recipe? Yes, absolutely. All right, then. All right. So, so I'm going to... Put we've some... put the uh, full uh, instructions, the amounts and everything in the video description below for mm-hmm. this, so go and check that out. All right, you've got the ingredients oh, on I've your got side. The ingredients yeah, on you do. Side. Okay, so... Let's lift these over here so you can see what we're going to do. Oh, pardon us. Sorry, Sorry, you were just deafened. Here we go. Right. So to make a chocolate mug cake, this is what you are going to need. All right, how about that? Yeah. We can see everything, can't we? All right, so you're going to want a mug. Then you're going to want a fork to mix everything up with and some measuring spoons. Uh, And let's just put the ingredients in one by one. First up, I'm going to start with four tablespoons of flour. That can go in here. There yep, yep, yep. Um, and then after the flour, oh, come on then. We're going to go for one, uh, is it a teaspoon of cocoa we're going for? Yeah, one teaspoon of cocoa powder. In it goes. Oh, making a mess here. Of course I am. Of course. It's the best we thing. Then we're going to go for two tablespoons of caster sugar. In that goes. Lovely. And then we've also got two tablespoons of water, which is going to help add a little bit of moisture to the cake. We want two tablespoons of vegetable oil. This yes. is going to be our fat, just like that. And then we need, uh, we're going to use an egg. We're going to use one small egg for ours. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, here's a moment of truth. I'll try cracking it without uh, putting all of the eggshell in. Oh, you. There we go. <laughs> and then the last thing we need is one quarter of a teaspoon of baking powder. So I'm going to get a little, just a level uh, teaspoon of that. That should do us, and in it goes. And those are all of our ingredients. So all I have to do now is mix it up with a fork. Now, it might not look that delicious just yet. No. But wait, just wait. Okay, mix that up. Do you want to have a go at mixing as well? Just I, so you feel I like would, you've been involved? I would love to be involved in there making the cake. All right, so you keep mixing that. I actually love making cake. <laughs> We're going to put this in the microwave for a minute and a half. But if you try it at home, that might depend on the type of microwave that you have. But yeah, a minute and a half is just perfect for us. Sorry, okay. I'm trying to do it away from the microphone, but I appreciate <laughs> that's probably a really annoying noise. I think we're, we're ready to go. Mixing the ingredients together like this gets them ready to react together. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then it's the heat. Let me give it one more quick stir. Okay. There we go, because you've got to make sure it's all nicely incorporated. In fact, why don't you go back to the top camera so you can see what we're doing. Give that a final mix. Get all of that flour from the bottom, and we're good to go. All right. Nice. So I'm going to pop this in the microwave now, and we're going to do some cooking live on the show. What could possibly go wrong? Okay, pop it in. A yeah. minute and a half on the timer. And what's going to happen is... The microwave is going to um, heat the ingredients up. It's going to give Mm -hmm. them some energy. And that's the energy that you need for the chemical reactions to start happening inside. It's going to transform. (laughs) It's going to transform it from a gooey cake mixture to a delicious cake. Mm. That's the plan. But for our experiment, we want to find out what each of the ingredients does. Yes. So we need to get prepping our other cakes. All right. right. I'm going to give that to you then. Let's get those out of the way. Um, I've already prepared another three. So this cake mixture here uh, doesn't have any egg in it. Gotcha. This one here doesn't have any baking powder in it. Okay. And then this one it doesn't have any oil in 
it. Ah, okay. Now, this is really important. For a proper science experiment, you need to only change one thing at a time, mm -hmm. right? Just one thing at a time. Yeah. Uh, and then see the effect that that has. Yeah. So we've kept the same amount of flour, sugar, water, cocoa powder in mm -hmm. all of them. And we've just changed, we just removed that one ingredient in each mug cake. Yeah, if you have enough time and enough people to eat all of the cake, then maybe you could try removing those ingredients as well. But we're just sticking with the four cakes today. That's plenty for us. Seven, <laughs> six, five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> Our first cake is ready. It's gonna be hot, okay? So you need to be careful getting it out, use an oven glove. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, or use. Look at that! Can you see Whoa. how much it's risen? Whoa! Okay, that, that's amazing. Does that need a little bit extra time? No, no, no. That's, that's going to be all right. Fine. It just looks gooey around the edges, but this here is oh, cooked. Love oh, great. that. Okay. Perfect. All right. I'm going to let this cool down though before I put it onto a plate. So we now need to cook three more mug cakes in the microwave. Three times one and a half minutes. Four and a half minutes. Okay. How about an idea? Whilst we start cooking the mug cakes in the microwave, we have a little quiz. If you're new to Let's Go Live, we always have a quiz. With the quiz music, you need to do the dance on the cake in the microwave. <laughs> I'm eating my cake. It's always some sort of thing. Hang on. I'm coming to Andrew because he's dancing too. <laughs> Love it. Okay, all right. Thanks, mate. Okay, time for a quiz. Okay, the quiz today is we already know what one of our ingredients in the chocolate cake is that's cocoa from the cacao tree, but where have all the other ingredients come from? We want you, we're gonna we're gonna name them, and then we want you to decide whether they came from a plant or an animal first. Yes. And then if you know, we'd like you to name that plant or animal. We're gonna start with the easier one. So uh, we used an egg. Does an egg come from a plant or an animal? It comes from a animal. An animal. Yes. yes, what animal is it? It's a chicken, absolutely. Okay, cool, we well, start with Well then if you got that one. one right. Okay, our next ingredient is this. We put in four tablespoons of flour, but is flour a plant or an animal? Where did it come? Where does it come from? A plant or an animal? I can hear them all yelling plant. Plant is correct. Well done. Yes. Well done. But um, flour is made from grinding up a type of grain. Now uh, you can get different types of flour, but we used ours with flour made from grinding up wheat. Here is a little field of wheat. Okay, so that sounds like a uh, mug cake number two has been made. Yeah. We're not gonna show, no let's, not, let's not show them, let's not show them. We're okay. gonna keep this one as a surprise. All right. All right, so that's the no egg mug cake is now made. Okay, next up, next ingredient um, was vegetable oil. Okay, we used vegetable oil. Does that come from a plant or an animal? What do you think? A plant or an animal? The answer is a plant. It is indeed a plant. So it's mm. called vegetable oil. Most vegetable oil actually comes from the seeds of different plants. Mm. Uh, commonly, actually, we tend to get oil from sunflower seeds or rape seeds. So if you've ever seen beautiful yellow fields when you've been driving through the UK, chances are that might have been rape seed. In America, it's called canola. Oh, canola oil. Cool. Yeah. Um, well done to Robin and Laura and Jacqueline and Catherine and Joseph and Hermione and all the rest of you that are saying flower for the first one. I'm well just, done. Just, I'll, I'll get some names for the second one in a second. <laughs> um, let's do one more. Let's do two more ingredients, okay. right? Uh, let's do sugar Ooh, next. So sugar. Does sugar come from a plant or an animal? Does sugar mm. come from a plant or an animal? It's a plant. Well done if you got that right. But what sort of plant does Ooh, it come from? That's We've a good actually question. named one of them in the show already today. Sugar cane. Yes. Yeah, so if you said sugar cane, then well done. You would be absolutely correct. Uh, and sugar cane that tends to come from hot tropical places, uh, islands such as the Caribbean, mm -hmm. and hot countries like Brazil. Mm, but but yeah. most British sugar actually comes from another type of plant, a plant called sugar. Beet. Mm. I've got a picture of some sugar beet here. Oh, first, here's sugar cane. Oh, next cake's done. Sugar cane. And here's sugar beet. 
in the UK. Now, uh, like beetroot, sugar beet has a, a big fleshy root that grows underground and it's naturally packed with sugars, so it's processed into sugar. Okay, so that was mug cake uh, number three. Yeah, that was no baking powder. The final one we've got to do is no oil. So we've got one more mug cake to go. It's going in minute half on the clock, which means we've got time to do one last ingredient. And that last ingredient is baking powder. Hmm. Baking powder. Does what do you think? From a plant or an animal? Ooh, that's a bit of a tricky one. It's actually, a bit of a, it's a bit of a tricky one. Baking powder is a mix of chemicals, yep. and one of those is a type of flour, mm -hmm. sometimes corn flour. Mm -hmm. So if you said plant, you wouldn't be wrong. There is a bit of corn flour in there. But the main two that are mm. in there basically come from humans making them. Yeah, they're right? artificial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and the main two chemicals that are in there are bicarbonate of soda and cream of tartar. Yeah. And when you bake your cake, the mm -hmm. two of them, the bicarbonate of soda, the cream of tartar, react together. Yeah. And they produce bubbles of a gas called carbon dioxide that helps the cake to rise. Yeah, it's why we use bicarbonate of soda for things like, for like our volcano experiments. That was a great one Same in Project reason, Earth. Because they react with the liquid, and sometimes vinegar, and that will go... <laughs> and you know, it creates those bubbles. So, okay, we've got a pretty good sense now yeah. of what all these different ingredients are, where they come from, what they do. Mm -hmm. We've got the last cake that's gonna be done in 20 seconds time. But why don't we start emptying or, or sort oh, of like thinking. showing the other cakes so Let's we can do see it. how they've done. Let's right. do it, all right. Well, Shall we start with the, the, the normal cake first? Our first ingredient? Yes. <laughs> all right, you, someone's excited. Okay, so this is our the just the recipe as it is mm -hmm. it's cooled down enough to touch so i'm okay. going to empty it out oh that's it we're all done so that one can cool down ah. okay so there's our normal cake <laughs> wow that is i should just say um we are being watched so carefully by look at him look at him peering at it <laughs> he's, he's peering right at it <laughs> There we go. You need to come in a little bit okay, just so you bit can see what's going on. Okay, nice. Oh, there it is. Okay, can what I have do a you think? Can I have a little taste? I mean, I would say that's nice and bouncy. Yeah. Don't you? It's uh, it's got a fluffiness to it. I can see it. air bubbles. Yeah, good. It's got a bit of crumb. Oh. Oh, oh look, at look at that. Look at that. Oh, we've, we've, oh, we've, we've locked, forks. locked forks. Okay, <gasps> okay. I'm going to go for it. Go on then. Have a taste. That's a good cake, that. Good cake. Sorry for eating with my mouth full. Mm, I'm going to have a, a little bite myself. That's a good cake. I'll take oh, that. that's delicious. I'll that take is that. really tasty. Okay. Okay, that one's going down so here. That was the normal cake. Got mm -hmm. it. Um, now let's have a look at the no egg cake. All right. All right. We took the egg out of this recipe. Oh, no. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh. Oh, dear. Oh. Ah. Okay. So this looks very different. Let's have a think about why. Taking the egg away has made the cake really crumbly. Yeah. Now that's because egg helps to hold all of the ingredients together. Yeah. We, we actually say that it's a binder. It binds all of those ingredients. Now when we think about egg, eggs are made of long chain molecules that are sort of raveled up together like this. Mm -hmm. But when those long chain molecules are heated, they unravel and they sort of form a bit of a structure like a net and that net helps to bind the ingredients but also traps those bubbles of carbon dioxide gas Clever. so without that our cake has become pretty crumbly but taste it oh yeah it just kind of falls apart in my mouth but i actually it's I delicious it, i think it tastes better do you know what it could taste better than the full cake mix so if you don't eat egg don't worry because I think this tastes just as good. Yeah, it doesn't it's hold bit... its structure, mm. but it's a bit like a little bit drier in a good way. That's a really Crumbly nice in a good one. way. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Okay, so we've looked at, uh, that was no egg. Yeah. Now let's have a look at no baking powder. All right, right? so what, what's your prediction? What do you think is, oh. Oh, oh. Oh dear. Uh, oh. <laughs> that, look at that. Wow. That is like, it's like rubber. Oh, that's so look, weird. Look at Andrew's face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. no. All right. So um, baking powder, we said, is a raising agent as well, right? We said that it's got those ingredients inside, the bicarbonate, the soda, the cream of tartar. And when they react together, they make the bubbles of carbon dioxide that get trapped and make your cake rise. But we don't have any bicarbonate of soda. This just tastes really 
it's like a rubber it's just like a rubber tire there's just no air in that at all it's really dense actually that one's not good I mean, all you get all of these are edible it just doesn't taste very nice that Go one on. is give us another close-up of it just so we oh, can see oh that's spongy can you see Look at, wait, like... give it a wobble <laughs> It's more like a gel. Okay, so that's that hasn't worked out very well. Okay, all right, so it's time for the last one. No oil. So this is the one that just got cooked. Um, so this time we've left the oil out of the mix. Mm -hmm. Let's have Ooh. a look at it. Oh, Ooh. okay. Okay. Also um, a little bit squidgy. This one. Okay. Oh, it's really tough. It's really, really, oh, whoa. So it's got bubbles in it, but it's, you know what? It's almost, it's very stretchy. It's quite g gluey. Oh. So what's going on here is that leaving the oil out has made it quite oh, dry, but it's also dry as well. quite stretchy. And that's because oil, it coats the other ingredients in sort of like a layer of fat, which stops them drying out too much. But it helps in another way too. We have used flour in this recipe and flour, when you mix it with water, it forms something called gluten. Mm -hmm. Gluten is sort of like the stretchy stuff that gives bread its stretchy, its stretch and its, and its shape. its strength, yeah. Yeah, but in a cake, you don't want too much gluten forming. So one of the reasons we're using oil is because it slows down that the gluten being made. So yep. we've got the water and the flour, but that bit of oil stops it from getting too glutinous, too stretchy. So without the oil in there, yeah. there's loads more gluten than normal, which means it is really stretchy and gooey and... No, don't like it. It's not as bad as the one without baking powder. True. It's not great. I mean, it's edible. But it's just not great. I'm it's just not that great. So we can see them side by side. Oh, okay. All right. As Maddie's doing that, why don't you have a go at this experiment at home? Um, maybe have a go at changing one of the other ingredients that we didn't get a chance to change. Um, mm -hmm. If you do, what can you combine together to make it even more delicious? Sorry. If you do uh, do this experiment and have a, have a little photo session, mm -hmm. send us a photo, get a grown up to send us a photo. This is our email address. Hello, let's go live at gmail.com. Let's have a look at all of them, shall we? Yeah, let's see them. So we can maybe zoom out so you can see as many as possible. Here we are. So this one here was the one with no oil, which was like really stretchy and glutinous. This one without egg has just completely crumbled, but did taste delicious. Um, this one with no baking powder is like a gloopy tire. And then finally, this was our actual mixture, which has made us a fluffy, light, bouncy chocolate cake. So I think that's the recipe that we should present to Andrew. Yes, okay. absolutely. Um, whilst you are uh, getting rid of those ones, oh, okay, Thank I'm you. getting rid of these ones well you, okay, you're probably fine. going to eat them all anyway greg so i might as well give them to you of course i will <laughs> don't want any food going to waste there we go and um, so let's just do a few uh, congrats to those of you who are watching live who said the right ingredients um ollie jacob emily kian and eloise for vegetable oil well done um angela recognized sugar cane or sugar beet mm. for sugar nice job well done to daniel and she orla and olivia who all got baking powder correct Okay, uh, and all of you lot watching back as well. Good job on the quiz. You know what? It's time to get out the chocolate cake that we prepared earlier, made with all the ingredients that you've already seen. And then what we've also done is we've taken our homemade chocolate spread and put it in the middle and on top and also added a few decorations. Okay. Look what we've done. <laughs> This is a mug a mug cake that we've just spruced up a little bit. Should I bring Andrew I'm in? I'm very proud of this. Right, okay, so we're going to present this to Andrew. <gasps> Hi, Andrew. Hi, Andrew. It's judging time. Hello, Greg. Hello, Maddie. What have you made for me? Um, so this is a hot oh, no. chocolate mug cake yes. uh, with homemade chocolate icing, shaken, not stirred. And we have just put, uh, we've just decorated it with some sprinkles as well. We're going to call it Chocky Cakey Licious. Yes, we you've are. You've taken a chocolate mug cake and you've taken it to the Ritz. Exactly. That's right. You've elevated That's exactly it. You've elevated done. it. Oh, we'll have that. We'll now, have can that. I... Importantly, if we're doing a proper judging, I need to see a cut through. I need to okay. see what it looks like. Before we do that, Andrew, can you join us in our awkward selfie for the day? This is when the people who sure, are watching, sure. they put someone in front of the screen and they take a snap and then they've got you in it as well, which is proper cool. Um, I'm going to hold this of right course. up like this so it looks absolutely huge, slightly out of focus, but it's all good. Okay, you ready? Uh, yeah. One, two, three. It's, it's the awkward, awkward selfie. selfie. 
Yay! Okay, all right, <laughs> I'm amazing. Get a knife then. Okay, cool. Um, if you do want to, uh, oh, yeah, I'll do that after. Okay, cool. So we got to cut this. Do we do it with the top down camera? Okay, go on then. Okay, we'll lose Andrew oh, for a pressure, second. Pressure, pressure. Okay. Oh, hang on. I've just got to give it a little slice. Oh, okay, that's good. There we go. Oh, that's good. Go. That's good. Oh, that's good. Here you are. <laughs> There we go. I don't that, know if that, you... that looks really. Pro I'm pleasantly surprised, Greg and Maddie. That that looks really nice. You've got a lovely crumb. You've got lots of little air bubbles in there, and um, the ice scene looks really lovely and fudgy. Actually, I think that's going to be terrific. I, I just wish I could try a bit. Oh uh, well, the recipe's in the and, description box below, Andrew. If you want to give it a go, I, I'm going to have to give this a go. I mean, I also love that it's ready in under ten minutes. So I mean, that right. really does appeal. But that it, looks, it looks really good. Yeah. Well done. You should give yourselves a round of applause for that. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, I know that you can't, you know, we can't do a handshake here uh, as you would do on Great British Bake Off, but maybe you could give us a high five through the internet instead. I'll try, I'll try my best. You go that way. Okay, Are you ready? ready? Are you yeah. ready? Are you ready? Okay. Three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Thank you so much, Andrew. <laughs> Bye. We'll see you soon. It's my pleasure. Bye. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Mate. <laughs> oh crikey if you do d and um, if you do take any photos the awkward selfies do share them with us this is us on the social media at maddie mo at greg foot and also <laughs> let's add uh, let's add andrew in here at cake smith yeah, as well go and a, say hello yeah there's a, he's you can find him on instagram on twitter and he's got lots of exciting things happening uh, at the moment so definitely give andrew a bit of a follow <laughs> That nearly brings oh, us to the end of the show. That pretty much brings us to the end of the show. Before we wrap up, before we say goodbye to a lot of people, um, let's just say, if you do want to help support Let's Go Live, um, it takes a heck of a lot of time to come up with the ideas and to test them and to write the scripts and to uh, make the shows. We've mm -hmm. now got Jess. Thank you, Jess, helping with a lot of production support. Rob's still doing the design work. Um, yeah. If you want to support us, there are two ways you can do it. Uh, you can join the Let's Go Live family. We've got a Patreon, which is a type of monthly subscription where every uh, month you get little extras like certificates and colouring sheets. Yeah, that's so right. Thank you so much for that support. Uh, or you can leave us a one-off tip over at the coffee page that we've set up. Um, rather than a monthly commitment, it's like mm. just treating us to a coffee to say thanks for uh, for a show all the week. Yeah, although it's not a coffee this week. No. We've changed it to a slice of cake. So if you want to buy each of us a slice of cake, that'd Ooh. be great. It's not like we haven't got enough here. Oh, a little, a little <laughs> slice of cake each. Oh, why not? Oh, nice. Um, before thank we you. go, though, let's say goodbye to some of you in the live chat should we do some birthdays first buddy? oh why not Let's all right do then some um, birthdays this weekend izzy benjamin and abby all had birthdays and aria also had a birthday and she had a maddie science rainbow themed birthday party that looked amazing so happy birthday to all of happy you happy birthday to the weekend birthdays <laughs> uh today we have got kian ava harriet and artie all turning six happy birthday happy birthday samuel is Five today and Raya is seven today. Also, happy birthday to all of you. Alana is also nine today. Wow. Well done to all the today birthdays. Congratulations. We've got some tomorrow birthdays. We do, because we're not live tomorrow. No. Uh, but James is nine tomorrow and Olivia is seven tomorrow. Uh, also, uh, we've also got a bonus, Kieran, who is 11 today. Just oh, sneaked in at the last wow. minute. Happy birthday, everyone. Happy birthday, you lot. All right. Okay, should we say goodbye to some people in the live chat? Why not say goodbye to some schools, eh? Let's do some schools. We missed you schools on Friday. I'm so sorry. Goodbye to uh, Mr. P and Mr. Young and uh, Six Maple Orchards Junior School. Uh, Redwood Primary School in Derby. Goodbye to John Perrin Primary School in London. Uh, Tigers Class at Pinewood Infant School in Nottingham. And goodbye to Year 4 at Barford St Peter's. And Bye. then let's zoom through a bunch of quick goodbyes, just a few of you. Uh, Flo and Arthur in Abingdon. Uh, goodbye to Georgina in Litchfield. Osman in East London. Uh, Edward and Adam in Essex. Bye. Maula and April in Sheffield. Sophie in Solihull. Theo and Megan. Uh, Julia and Sam. Bye. Lewis and Jake. Zach and Arthur. And Bavika, Molly, Nia, Elsa, Jack and Oliver. Goodbye, everyone. Bye, everyone. So our next show is on Wednesday. We will be live on YouTube at 11 a.m. And we're going to be learning some things about strawberries and making some tasty smoothies. Yes, we will. We'll but see you then. Until then, stay curious. Bye. Let them eat cake. Come on, then. <laughs> <laughs>